All right, so we're going to be starting the 20th problem now, the ground 75. This one is called majority element. We are given 20 minutes for this problem. So let's start the countdown now. Okay, so let's see. Majority element. Given an array nums of size n, return the majority element. Majority element is the element that appears more than n divided by 2 times. You may assume that the majority element always exists in the array. Okay, that's nice. It can be an array of length 1. Numbers can be negative and positive. N is equal to nums dot length. Okay, do we... Okay, I'm just going to copy this over, actually. I believe that's pretty straightforward. But how should we do this? In the size of array, return the majority element. So what comes to mind right away is to iterate over it and just use a hash map where the key is the number and then the value is just the count. And <clears throat> to return the majority element more than n divided by two times. <clears throat> okay, excuse me. So it's going to be the element with the highest count, essentially. No other element will appear more than n divided by two times. So, and so if we have a list of length seven, is this seven? Yeah, that's seven. Two appears, n divided by two, which is three point five, which goes down to three, but it appears more than that, so it has to appear four times. Same for if the list was of length four, it'd have to appear three times because it's more than that middle value. So we basically. Yeah, I'll just type that out, hash map with, mm, what is it, element and count. Is there a more optical way of doing it, though? Could you solve this problem in linear time in an O of one space? O of one space. Well, so I guess you could say that the, let's see, the, the nums, the actual elements is constant. So we know that more than half of them are going to be a single number. So when we store that in a hash map and we're getting its counts, that's already like n divided by two. Um, so um, it seems like our approach is linear time and constant space. So I'm just going to implement it. I don't think there's much to this problem, actually. Um, so let's just go over it. So we are first going to create our hash map. This one is going to be of key integer and value integer. This one is going to be called maybe element counts, and it's going to be equal to a uh, same type. Let's create an empty one. All right, and then we're going to iterate through nums. So for int i is equal to zero, as long as i is less than nums dot length, which is equivalent to n. Then we're basically going to check if it's contained in elements.count. So elements counts dot contain nums at i. 
then we're simply going to increment the value that's already that already exists there. So we're going to say element count dot put element counts dot get um, at i. We're going to say plus one and num i. So basically, if it exists in our element counts hash map, then we're going to put at that value the count plus one. But if it doesn't exist, then we're just going to put normally dot put i and the count will be one there. Let's not forget semicolons. Okay, once we have the count, we can, let's see, just find which one is the majority element, which I guess it could just be max, some, some integer called max count, we can initialize that to zero. And what I'm actually going to do is use a tree map because it's essentially the same as a hash map, it's just that there is an ordering to the entries. So when you put a key value pair into the tree map, uh, the order in which they are put is maintained. And that way we can not really iterate, but we can go through each values. Whereas if we were using just a, a, what, a hash map, we could look for a specific value, but if we wanted to remove it or not look at it again, then we would sort of, it would be difficult to, we would have to keep track of each individual element separately somewhere else, and then make sure that we are kind of checking off every element from that list. Um, but here we can just look at the top and then remove it until it's empty. So we can say while element counts dot is empty. Actually, while it is not empty, what we're going to do is look at the top element. So we're going to say element counts dot get first key and we can save this as say cur counts and we can say if cur count is greater than max count then we are going to set max count equal to cur count And then we got to make sure to remove that first key pair, that mapping from the tree map. So we're going to say element count dot remove element count dot first key. Okay, and then what do we want to return at the end? We want to get key, contains key. So we technically want to return the element, return the majority element. So actually we don't really need a max count. We can just say this element counts dot first key and max count is actually going to be initialized to nothing there will eventually be something 
because we cannot have an empty input array. Move, okay. And then in the end, we want to return max count element. Okay, and this seems right to me. I'm just going to check over the logic really quick, make sure it makes sense. Ray n, or ray nums of size n, return the majority element, it's the element that appears more than n divided by two times. So my approach was to go through the entire input list, add each unique element to a hash map, and as we go through the input list, add to its count if we find the element again. And then we're going to instantiate a variable called max count element. And we're going to go through that map of element counts and find the one that has the highest count because no element can have more than n divided by twos or yeah no there is no other element that has a count of this size okay so yeah i'm just going to run the test case make sure we don't have any syntactical issues what do we have Contains key. I always forget this. Contains key. I really need to hammer that home. Contains key for hash maps. You can also do contains val. And hash, when I say hash maps, <clears throat> tree maps pretty much also apply. So let's see. No, it's kind of slow. It's Spelled that wrong. Ele no, did I? Element counts. Contains key. Contains. Contains key. Okay, line six, we have the error. Element counts dot put. Variable num. Oh, it's called nums. Oh boy. Nums. Nums. Okay. Line eight. Nums. Twelve. Wow, some very Small syntactical stuff that should be pretty evident. First key. No, no, no. that was wrong. I think. No. Element counts dot first key. Fifteen. Okay. A lot of little spelling errors all over the place. Um, okay, that's decreased the number of errors, but let's see. Per count is equal to max count. Per count, max count. Yeah, we changed the. Yeah. I'm gonna make another inter um, intermediate variable called max, just max count like that. We can actually set this equal to zero. Okay. Element counts. Let's look at the so find line fifteen. First key. 
element count. Okay, that decreased number of errors. I think there's still one. Yeah, return max count element. Might not have been initialized. Okay. Um, just for the sake of initializing it, we can say integer dot min value. Although we can have negative values, but this should never be a problem because we will always have a an array of length one at least. Let's just run it. Wrong answer output. Okay, gave us the min val. Why did it give us the min val? Are we not updating? We are setting max count equal to that. We need to be setting max count element. There are a lot of little things that I failed to keep track of while I was doing this. Okay, so that worked. Let's hit submit. Okay, output is four. Why so? Well, that's because we have to update max count. Max count should now equal to per count. Okay. Yeah, that's cool. I wasted a lot of time worrying or looking at the low level. Well, so I came up with a good solution, but it had a lot of little holes in it all over the place. And it made me forget about some like very small things. And I let the compiler just tell me all the errors. I'm not sure if, I'm sure that would not look very good when you're actually, um, you know, doing the problem. So I think I really need to pay attention to my Java syntax in particular. And also names of things and making sure that I update them correctly. But so yeah, I'm going to stop the video there and we'll go over the solution in a bit.